This is some in this video we are looking at the critical region and then p-values as well. So we'll start off with a critical region as a critical region is worked out by a sort of trial and error. So you have to just put in values for x and find a value that is lower but also close to the significance level and that value of x is the critical value. So here we say that x is binomially distributed, 30p, so that's the number of trials, and then p is the probability, and h0, so the null hypothesis, is going to be p is equal to 0.15, and the alternative hypothesis is that p is more than 0.15. So find the critical region for x if the significance level is 15%. So we'll start off by wondering what it would be if p is x um, is more than or equal to 8. So we're looking at a, a rough estimate and we're thinking so it has to if it was more than 0.15 um, it's saying that it's increased so that means that it would be a fairly high it would be higher than 1 point, uh, 0.15. So if we did 30 times by 0.15 we would expect it to be around 4.5 is the expected amount, so 8 seems a decent place to start. So therefore, in order to do this, we're going to do 1 minus p, and then it's going to be x is less than or equal to 7. So therefore, what we're going to be putting in is we're going to put in x is equal to 7. We'll put in n is equal to 30. And we will put in p is equal to 0.15. Put that into our calculators, and we're going to do 1 minus probability that x is less than or equal to 7. That is equal to 0 0.0698. Not point not six nine eight. Now, therefore, we use this to compare it to the significance level. So, not point one five um, is certainly more than not point not six nine eight. So that does satisfy it. So we have found a value that is lower, but it is fairly close to the significance level. However, we cannot be sure that that's our correct answer until we've tried a more extreme value. So this time we're going to try p of x, the probability that x is more than or equal to 7. So we're going a bit lower, a bit closer to what we'd expect. So this means that this is going to be equal to 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 6. And that, by using x is equal to 6 this time instead of 7, we're going to get that that is equal to 0 0.153. Now this time, 0 0.15, which is our significance level, is going to be less than 0 0.153 just. So this means that this value is not lower than the significance level. It is greater, so this is not our critical value. So therefore, our critical region is going to be p probability that x is, is going to, in fact, you don't need a p, our critical region is just going to be x is greater than or equal to 8. So in the next question, we're looking at p-values, and the p-value is the probability that x is equal to or more extreme than an observed value. So if the p-value is greater than the significance level, you accept the null hypothesis, but if the p-value is less than the significance level, you would reject the null hypothesis. So this question is saying that x is binomially distributed 60 and p, and then p is equal to 0 0.45 in the null hypothesis. In the alternative hypothesis, it means that p is just not equal to 0.45. And this is important because we need to point out that this is a two-tailed test. Now, this will become very important when we start looking at the significance level. Now, the significance level in this is 10%, but because it's both sides, 
So that's just going to be 5% for one side and then 5% for the other side. That's because it's a two-tailed test. So that's why we're having to half the significance level. So it says find the p-value to four decimal places and state the conclusion if x is equal to 34 and x is equal to 21. So we'll start off with x is equal to 34. And in this, um, it says it's an extreme value. Uh, so this is going to be the high one. So they were saying that p of x is more than or equal to 34. As it's a lot over over what we would expect. So therefore that is going to be equal to 1 minus the probability that x is less than or equal to 33. So that x is going to be equal to 33, n is going to be equal to 60, and then p is going to be equal to 0.45. Do 1 minus that, therefore our p-value is equal to 0 0.0462. So therefore in our conclusion, we're going to say therefore 0 0.0462 and we're going to compare it to this 5%, percent so over 10%, percent we are comparing it to the significance level and that is less than 0 0.05. So therefore, it says that if a p-value is less than significance level, you reject H0. Therefore, you reject H0. So therefore, what you're saying is actually P is not equal to 0.45. Now, let's look onto B, as B is saying about X is equal to 21. So in this case, the probability of X is going to be less than or equal to 21. That stays the same, so we're going to be putting in x is equal to 21, n is equal to 60, uh, and p is equal to 0 0.45. Therefore, p-value is going to be equal to 0 0.0. 758. And remember we're doing this on binomial CD instead of binomial PD. So therefore, this time 0 0.0758 is greater than 0 0.05, which is our significance level. Therefore, as the p-value is greater than the significance level, you accept H0. So now we've got a bit more of a wordy question. It says, in a large container of sweets, 15% are blackcurrant flavoured. And after a group of children have eaten a lot of the sweets, one of the children wants to see whether the proportion of blackcurrant sweets in the container has changed. So she selects a random sample of 60 sweets and finds that four of them are blackcurrant, fa uh, blackcurrant flavoured. So first of all, we have to state our hypothesis clearly and test at the 10% significance level whether or not there is evidence that the proportion of blackcurrant flavoured sweets has changed. So therefore, we firstly need to do, find out what H0 and H1 are. So H0, so the P is going to be 15%, so P is equal to 0 0.15. And in H1... P is a two-tailed test, it just says it's changed. That means that P is just not equal to 0 0.15. Now therefore, we also know that P is going to be the proportion of black current sweets, which you can write if you want to. And then what we're going to have to do is say that probability, we're looking at when P, the probability that X is going to be less than or equal to 4. And we're using 4 because it says that a four of them are black currant flavoured. So that means that we're doing four. That's the lowest amount there. And it could be three, two or one. So we're doing less than or equal to. We're not just saying it's equal to four. So therefore, that is just going to be equal to probability of x is less than or equal to four. We don't need to change any of the numbers in it. So we can say that x is equal to four. 
uh, n is equal to 60 because it's a sample of 60 sweets and then p is equal to 0.15 so we're going to try and work out the p value here and then can and compare it so therefore p value is going to be equal to 0.04237. Now we need to compare this to the significance level, which is 10% in here. But obviously, it's a two-tailed test, so that's going to be 5%. But then 0.04237 is less than 0.05. Not five, so therefore reject H naught. So we can conclude in this case that um, the proportion has changed. That there are, we're going to accept the fact that probability is no longer not point one five. Now in B, it's asking us if the child discovers that she miscounted and there are actually five uh, blackcurrant flavored sweets, would your conclusion change? So this time, we're also going to look at what the p-value is, but we're saying that x is now less than or equal to 5. So therefore, x is going to be equal to 5, n is going to equal 60, and p is going to equal 0.15. Therefore, p-value is equal this time to 0 0.0968. Compare that to the significance level, we're going to get the fact that 0 0.0968 is more than 0 0.05, therefore accept H0. So this time, we're saying that actually the null hypothesis hasn't changed and the probability is still 15%. So the final question we have here says that a phone repairer found that one in 10 phones brought in for repair had cracked screens. She suspects that over time, this proportion has reduced. So she carries out a hypothesis test and a 10% significance level on the next 40 phones that are brought in. So A says that state clearly H0 and H1. So that means for A, we're going to have the fact that H0, P is equal to 1 in 10, so P is equal to 0.1. Now H1, now she believes that this uh, has reduced, as she says there, so therefore P is actually going to be less than 0.1, so it's just a 1 tailed test. Now P is a probability of a phone being bought in for repair having a cracked screen. So now we've got that, we stated that, we now need to work out what the critical um, value of a critical region is because that's how she said she initially thought that N of these phones had cracked screens and concluded that she should reject H0. She then found that one more screen was cracked and she concluded that she should actually accept H0. So that's why we need to find that critical value. So we'll start off by saying that P, the probability of X being less than or equal to four. So we start off with a random number, see what it gives us. So therefore, we're gonna say X is equal to four, then N is equal to 40, and then p is equal to 0.1. Now, therefore, that is equal to 0 0.629, which is obviously much greater than the significance level of 0 0.1. So we know that that's way too high. If there were four, then that would be in the acceptance region. Now we need to look at something a lot lower then. So we can this time say that, well, it has to be lower, so we'll go right lower and we'll say px is less than or equal to one. So therefore we'll say x is equal to one, n is equal to 40, and p is equal to 0 0.1. Therefore this time what we get is 0 0.0805, 
which is less than 0 0.1. So therefore, that's a tip. That one was a cross. This one does fit it. That could be our critical value. The only thing we need to look at is we need to look at now um, probability that x is less than or equal to 2. Because if this is over 0 0.1, then we know that that one there is our critical value. However, if this one is still under 0 0.1, which I doubt it will be, then we can that probably would be our critical value. Let's see what it is anyway. So n equals 40, p equals 0 0.1. So therefore, what we get in this when we put it in is 0 0.2228, which is evidently more than 0 0.1. So we can cross that one as well. So that there is our critical value. Our critical value is x is less than or equal to 1. So now we have our critical value. We can say that it says that she initially thought that n of the phones had cracked screens and concluded that she should reject h0. So if she was to reject h0, n would equal 1. Now this is because... She then found one more screen was correct and she concluded that she should accept H0. So if it was 2, then obviously because this is actually, you could say that's a p-value as well. So you would say that as that's more than the significance level, therefore you would um, accept H0. But in this case, it's actually less than the significance level. So therefore you are rejecting H0. So that means that n is equal to 1. So thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye.